Uh, this is Bernard Judge. Today is the 2nd of June, and we are at the Chicago History Museum. Could you please state your name for the record? William Cousins, Jr. Thank you very much. And have you ever done an oral history before? No. Okay. Um, would you mind giving us a synopsis of your career, starting with uh, uh, graduating after you graduated from Du Sable High School as president of your class? Yes. I was a, a grad of Du Sable in January of 1945. Now, I then uh, uh, matriculated to the University of Illinois on a general assembly scholarship. But for that, I would not have gone. The school received a general assembly scholarship from uh, Representative Skiles, whom I didn't know well, and the school gave it to me. So I, uh, I attended there. Uh, I had never set foot there before, and I would not have gone but for that, because although the tuition was only $90 a year, uh, I had no plans to go outside the city of Chicago, yeah. but I was going to go to college, uh, for that matter. And uh, then the, I graduated from Illinois in 1948. I spent three and a half years here, and I graduated as an honor student. I did. I, and uh, I applied to uh, law schools of Harvard, Yale, Columbia, uh, and Michigan. All of them accepted me. Indeed, uh, uh, I had early admissions uh, uh, at uh, Harvard uh, and Yale in particular. And, and uh, then I uh, 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 graduated from Harvard in 1951. On the day I graduated from law school, I reported to service. Uh, I had uh, received a second lieutenant's commission while at the University of Illinois. I was graduated in the uh, first advanced ROTC class uh, after World War II. When you saw Lord, and I was the most distinguished graduate from that class. Uh, the Chinese jumped across the Yalu and the Chinese North jumped across, uh, uh, and uh, North, South, North Korean jumped across the Yalu uh, and invaded South Korea uh, in the summer of 50, and I received orders uh, to uh, uh, go uh, uh, for service, really. Uh, it's my last year in law school. Uh, I, of course, uh, made an appeal. My appeal was based on a very unique basis. Uh, I, was, uh, I was at large because uh, I uh, was an infantry officer and uh, I had sought to affiliate with the Massachusetts Military District, which had uh, an infantry unit, but they had no black officers at that time who commanded white troops. So they did not accept me. So I was at large. They had infantry unit. And my appeal was based on this, uh, that uh, I was being penalized for the discriminatory policies of the Army. I had no problem serving my country, but I started my last year of law school, and, and who knows what the future would hold. Uh, but uh, uh, I uh, considered uh, uh, that uh, a grant to me of uh, uh, a stay until the day I graduated from law school uh, should be granted. I withdrew from school, came home. Uh, I must have thought I had some uh, prospect for having that granted. I, although I wouldn't have, of course, bet my bottom dollar on it, uh, and I received a reprieve that ordered me to report to the commandant of Fort Devon, Massachusetts, the day after graduation. That's what I did. I graduated from law school. Next day, I reported to Fort Devon, Massachusetts, and be began my military career as an active uh, uh, first lieutenant infantry. Uh, and uh, presently, uh, I uh, was uh, ordered to uh, be assigned to the Far East Command, uh, which meant that I was going to Korea. Uh, and this was uh, uh, a year out from the time that my required period of service in my category I, uh, would end. And uh, I went through Japan to, and further trained there uh, in the mountains of Hokkaido and the like. Uh, and then the, in October of 52, I was assigned to Korea, and I stayed there until uh, uh, May of 53. I was a combat infantry tool leader uh, in uh, Korea see, while I was there. And after May, I received my uh, orders to releasing me, relieving me from duty there and ordering me to return to the States. Now, I returned to the States and uh, began my uh, legal career. Uh, uh, first thing I did was hold up uh, for uh, about six weeks and studied for the bar exam, which I took in July. I came home in June, studied for the bar, and took in July, passed the bar. 
And then the next thing I did was start looking for a job. I just walked from place to place. I had no, I had no uh, really uh, re appointments. And I, to tell you a little story, I went to the United States District Attorney's Office. Um, and there was a, a U.S. District Attorney by the name of Teakin at that time. Teakin? Teakin. He okay. was a Republican, you see. Well, I didn't. I, I, I was basically a Democrat, but I had been active in any politics. I right. know what the politics were in the city, but I, uh, he was a U.S. District Attorney. I went to, to the desk and spoke to the secretary and, and uh, receptionist and, and uh, uh, indicated that I was there to apply for a position uh, with the district attorney. Do you have an appointment, she says. I said, no. She asked me some questions about myself and, and after uh, a little bit, she said, Mr. Teakin, we'll see. I went in and talked to him for uh, about an hour. Well, a huge room he had, you know, a long conversation he did. Uh, he asked me, you know, about my old education background. I'm a Harvard Law School graduate. And uh, uh, then the last question he asked me, who are your sponsors? <laughs> now, uh, this question I had not expected. But I did know some prominent uh, yeah, lawyers. Uh, they were black lawyers, uh, uh, like Earl B. Dickerson, uh, uh, in particular, uh, for that matter. And uh, uh, what he said, after I'd named off these lawyers, he said, I'll tell you what you do. You go out and get your sponsor. Uh, that was my first lesson in politics in this city. And he was a Republican, you see. So I kept it in mind. What I did next, I went to Chicago Italian Trust Company. I just walked up to the personnel office and went in. Uh, and there was a, uh, a personnel officer with the name of Al Long. Al Long later became the president of that company. But uh, he interviewed me, gave me a little test to do, and I went out and he came back. And I came back and he asked me, he said, well, uh, what are you asking for the salary? And I said, $3,600. He said, you hired. Now, I, know, I realize now I could have gotten more money if I'd asked for it, but I had it. And so I started my career working as a title company, mm -hmm. uh, a, a lawyer for the title company. Uh, and um, I was there for about three years. And uh, then one of my, uh, oh, he wasn't my classmate, he was a year ahead of me in, in, in law school. Uh, came by my desk one day and he knocked on the desk and he said, Bill, you don't want to stay here forever. That's what he said. Uh, and struck me uh, for that matter. Now, then I had become active as a young Republican. I was a very active young Republican in the city. I was a treasurer of the Cook County Young Republican Party. And in the state, I was voted the most outstanding young Republican in the state when Bill Rensselaer was the president. And that was Bill Rensselaer? Yes, he okay. was president. And I was active. I organized chapters and, you know, and the like. And uh, so um, it, it so happens that uh, uh, they had an election. Adamowski uh, was elected, uh, and uh, his uh, uh, first assistant uh, was uh, a good friend of mine. And he called me and said, Bill, you haven't applied for the state service. I said, he said, I said, no. He said, why? I, I said, because I, out there in the ward, eight, seven, I was in six ward now, where, where I'm living, I said, they have people ahead of me, you see. He's applying away. And I applied. I was among the first lo of those um, who were hired at a mosque as assistant state attorney. I was assigned to civil division, and uh, uh, particularly I was assigned to the condemnation division, where I handled real estate matters. I did handle some cases in court, condemnation cases, but I handled all of the transfers of properties uh, that were obtained by transfers of, uh, of deed through escrows and like that were mm -hmm. for the uh, Dan Ryan, the Kennedy Expressway, those parts of the county that the county had responsibility. I was involved in them for the state attorney's office. And uh, then uh, our, after uh, having uh, been uh, in uh, the uh, state's attorney's office uh, uh, un uh, until from 57 to 60, they had an election here. Kennedy versus Nixon. I was Republican, and uh, Nixon was defeated. I could see it happening as I watched the screen, you know, of this uh, debate they had, you know, where he was looking rather artificial, and 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 Kennedy was appealing. So I, uh, I, 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 I wasn't surprised that that 
at Kennedy v. Nixon. But, but uh, then there was a change of, uh, of, uh, of uh, administration because uh, Ward, Daniel Ward, defeated Adamowski, see, at that time. And Daniel Ward came into office, he called a big meeting, all of the uh, uh, states, uh, assistant state attorneys uh, in the civil division, no worry about anything, he says, you know, just continue to do your work. But what they did in those days that people are not aware of now, when there was a change of administration, everybody signed a, a resignation, a written resignation. Right. So, um, so I uh, wasn't active really uh, anymore, but I was a, uh, a businessman. His name was James Worthy. Uh, James formed uh, what he called a Republican uh, uh, Citizens uh, League, and he called me and he asked me if I'd be a member of the board. I said, okay. And one day, the Tribune published a new, uh, maybe it wasn't a Republican Citizens League, but United Repub Republican uh, uh, Fund, and, 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 and the Tribune published the list of the board of directors. My name was there. Okay. And about uh, two weeks uh, later, I got a call into my office by my supervisor, a fellow named Blair Vaughn, uh, in the condemnation division. And he said, uh, Bill, he said, why did you uh, uh, join that uh, organization. I said, oh, I thought it was uh, in order. He said, it accepted your, res accepted your resignation. I said, uh, when? He gave me the date of the newspaper article two weeks prior. Now, this, this is politics are rough, you see, in those days. So I walked out of the state's attorney's office. People asked me, you've been fired? Yes, retroactively, I've been fired. You see, it ain't going to be. So they said, resignation. But, but it, it was an involuntary resignation. Yes. So I went, left the office and started my practice of law. Now, this is a blessing in disguise. One wouldn't say so looking at it uh, foresight, but it was. Uh, and I had to work like a beaver, which I did as a practicing lawyer. And I developed a, a clientele and the like. And then the, uh, uh, some uh, half dozen years later, I was a candidate for Alderman in the Eighth Ward. I'd, I was always involved in, in uh, community work and civic work, uh, and I uh, was a president of Chatham Avalon Park Community Council from 62 to 65. We did a whole lot in that community, a whole lot. Did. I spent uh, as much time doing that volunteer work as I did practicing law, you see. I did. And uh, uh, then uh, it came time for an automatic election, which is uh, in 1967. And uh, 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 the incumbent uh, really had had no had no reasonable chance of winning, and and he was uh, um, uh, he was his name was Connors, and and uh, so he stepped down. He's white. The ward then was about sixty percent black and forty percent. Condon. 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 Rather, yeah. I said Condon. Condon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that, and and uh, he stepped down. And he, they made him a judge. You see. And then they, they, they put up an African-American who was my good friend. We've been working together. He run, you know, as a party nominee. Uh, but uh, let's say in a, in a very difficult uh, race. I'd expect to win all the while, but I had to go in and run off. And uh, yeah, I did. I won. So uh, that, that was really uh, I con what I considered to be one of the highest achievements I'd had, you know, in my career at that time, being elected, mind you. Uh, 